Shalom, shalom. Give me one sec. One sec. Shalom, y'all. All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akiam. Across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom to the believers that are out there that believe and help aid the ministry within whatever way, form or fashion the Heavenly Father put on your spirit to do it. And shalom to you, few sincere sisters that are out there that believe in this testimony as well. All right. I'm the brother Sha'ar coming at you all with another lesson through the spirit. Uh, Lord within us edifying. And uh, I was just doing some reading, some reading earlier, touching up on a few things as pertaining to um, the building of the second temple all right and when you read of the account of the second temple being built in the preparation of it and the different trials and tribulation that we had to go through all right one thing was jake was being very stagnant and lazy all right they became um very uh what's the word i'm looking for um they became very um ah, what's the word ah, i don't know why i can't think of the word right now but uh pretty much Within all the trials and tribulation that they were going through, Jake got pretty much lax and they got, um, I don't know why I can't think of the word, but anyway, they got lax and they got discomfited. All right, that ain't the word, but I hope that's the, the right filler word that I'm using. All right, discouraged. That's the word that I'm looking for. And the reason why they were so discouraged because of all the things that was taking place around them and the hindrance of building the temple. Okay? And when you look at that, you spiritually look at the temple being built today, the third temple, which is a spiritual temple. All right. When you look at how the second temple was erected and the trials and tribulation that Jake had to go through. All right. It's a very similar fashion to the spiritual temple that's being built right now. OK. Now, when within this lesson, Lord, when this edifying, um, as you see within the title, all right, a remnant um, shall return and build. All right. Because we do represent that remnant. That return from that um, state of being Gentiles, we've returned from that mind state, all right, and we've came back to build, okay? Just as how we had actually physically did that around the time of um, Zerubbabel, all right? When you look at Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel was the governor of uh, Judea, all right? He was the governor of Judea, and he actually had favor within the king to pretty much grab a handful of Israelites from Babylon and started rebuilding the old temple, all right? And as that was taking place, and I got the account here in Ezra, the fourth chapter, but you had heathen that wanted to build with us, and when we had told them no, all right, they got upset. They got upset, and they went on and, and spoke a lot to the king, all right, and um, hindered us from building, okay? Now, you look at it today with the different heathen that are out there. You look at Christianity, all right, a lot of them want to be involved as pertaining to this ministry, all right. You got a lot of people that want to be involved in this ministry. They'll tell us that we're doing the right thing. The only thing that they say we're doing wrong is that we don't allow the other nations to build with us. And that we do have to stand toward the other nations, which is actually true according to the scriptures. All right. But they don't adhere to it. So the next thing that they resort to doing is scoffing, scorning the man of the Lord. All right. And stopping this program from being uplifted as they had did before. All right. The only difference is this program ain't going to be stopped. Like Amelia said, if this thing be of man, it's going to stop. But if it be of the Most High, it's going to flourish. And best believe this thing of ours is of the Heavenly Father. Okay? Now, what I'm going to read here is starting off. And again, it was a little difficult for me to find out where I was going to start off on as pertaining to this lesson. But I'm going to start off in the book of Ezra, the fourth chapter. And I'm going to start from the top. All right? And it reads, Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin... Heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord God of Israel. Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Ezra, king of Assur, 
which brought us up hither. All right. Now, when you go into this, um, you had those different nations that had dwelled among the, 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 the Medians. All right. Those people that dwelled in Media and around the time of, um, of I believe, the king of Assur. I believe he had taken them out of that land and brought them into the land of um, Samaria. All right. So you had those heathen that dwelt within that land that wanted to aid us within building. All right. Now, when you continue to read, it says, but Zerubbabel and Joshua and the rest of the chiefs of the fathers of Israel said unto them, ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God, but we ourselves together will build unto Yahweh, God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, had commanded us. All right, now the significance within that, all right, you had these other nations that wanted to help us build. All right, and you had that taking place right now, man. You got a lot of people, all right, that are involved in Christianity and so forth, and they want to adhere and get themselves involved as pertaining to this ministry, but at the end of the day, it's not meant for them. All right, the only difference is it's not the physical house that we're building right now as we had built back then around the time of Zerubbabel, but we're building up a spiritual house right now, man. And just as you had those heathen that wanted to aid us then, all right, you had them today that try to get involved, Christianity, get involved in the scriptures and have no idea or no clue what it's talking about, man. All right. But when you continue to read this, and I'm going to jump down to another part, the same people that wanted to build the temple with us, the same exact people right after we told them they can't build it with us, they turned their backs right against us and started scoffing and talking against us, man. Which goes to show you the other nations were never meant to be amongst us and help us build, man. All right. That was never the case. Because they never believed anyway, man. Here in this corruptible ass world, in this corruptible flesh, where you got a bunch of the wicked that are ruling, starting with Esau Edom, who is the wicked, all right, you have those other nations, those these other nations that are under that vibration. All right? So check this out. These same people that wanted to help us build the temple back then. All right, and soon as um soon as the Zerubbabel and Joshua told them no, this is what they did. All right. It says Let's see here. It says, then the people of the land weakened the hands. I'm sorry. It says, and then the people of the land weakened the hands of the prop, the people of Judah and troubled them in building. All right. So right after we had told them no, all right, they put their hands against us and they troubled us as pertaining to building, man. All right. They didn't want us to build. They pretty much said if they couldn't build, if they couldn't build with us, it wasn't going to be no temple that's built. All right. And that's the mindset of these heathen today. All right. That's why you see them trying to cut off YouTube pages, doing everything that they can do to try to stop this word from flourishing, from trying to stop this building, this temple from being built. Now, the thing about it is this is up the most high. All right. So there's not going to be any stoppage to building this temple, especially within this last go around this third temple being rededicated. All right. As pertaining to the men of the Lord prophesying. All right. They ain't going to be able to stop this. But you see the spirit that they was in back then. All right. So when you keep reading, it says, then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. All the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius, king of Persia, and in the reign of Ahasuerus, in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. All right. So these people had done this on numerous occasions. All right. When you read about the history, there was two times on occasion that we were getting ready to build the temple and we told them no. And just like they had turned their backs on us and complained to the king. All right. They, they, they did it again under Darius. All right. Now, as pertaining to this. All right. Um, Cyrus had given us a decree. All right. To rebuild the, the temple. Cyrus, pretty much when you read in the scrolls in Isaiah 45. Matter of fact, I'll get that really quick and then I'll jump back to Ezra. All right, because Cyrus was actually prophesied, all right, by the Lord to actually be the king that was going to pretty much bring us out of the land of Babylon and allow us to build actually under his rule. All right. Now, a lot of Christians think that that was a form of prosperity that we had when that wasn't the case. Now, we did have leeway to build the temple. But the thing about it is, and I just read the example as pertaining to us getting ready to build the temple, you had the heathen nation that was coming up against us. That was frustrating us. And when you actually go into the history of it, we was in a very, very, very deep state of poverty. All right. As we rededicated the temple. OK, when we actually had built the second temple, you had Israel, you had Jake. 
all right, start off with the, from the top of the nation to the lowest of the nation in a state of mourning, all right, during the temple because they looked at the newer version of the temple and they wept because it wasn't not nearly in the same glorious fashion as the first temple, all right? So Jake was in the form of poverty when they was building, all right? And then you had the heathen, which was a, a thorn in our side that pretty much frustrated us as pertaining to build the temple, all right? Now, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, and I'm going to start from the top because I mentioned earlier that it was under Cyrus's rule that he gave the green light for us to rebuild the temple, okay? So this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 1, and it reads, Thus saith Yahweh, who was anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And when you read about the history of King Cyrus, King Cyrus, after, like, when he had taken down um, Babylon, he had taken down numerous reasons. He was the king of the earth around that time. All right, Cyrus had supreme power. Okay, and you read about it in Daniel, the seventh chapter, as pertaining to the, um, as pertaining to the four beasts. All right, you had the one beast that had, was aligned with eagle's wings, which represented the, um, the Babylonian Empire. All right, and those, those wings actually represented the Assyrians. Okay, and then you had the second beast, which was what? The second beast was that bear, all right, with the, with the bones in its mouth. Okay, and that bear was symbolic of the Medio Persian Empire that had ruled after Nebuchadnezzar. All right, those 70 years that we were in subject under the Babylonians, you had King Cyrus come into, um, come into Babylon and destroy pretty much some um, of the rule of the Babylonians. And pretty much the spirit of the Lord was upon Cyrus to, to a degree, liberate us from the hands of our enemies. All right. And again, this was prophesied in the book of Isaiah 45. OK, so it says, thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And I will loose the loins of the king to open before him the two lead gates and the gates shall not be shut. All right. And that had taken place under the rule of King Cyrus. OK, so as I jump back to what I was reading in Ezra, the fourth chapter. All right. It says Ezra four and five. And he hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even unto the reign of Darius, king of Persia, and to the reign of Ahasuerus in the beginning of his reign, wrote they unto him an accusation against the inhabitants of Jerusalem and, Jeru and Ju um, Ju Judah and Jerusalem. All right, so you had these particular people write a letter, all right, unto the king to stop us from building. All right, now I'm going to jump down, okay, to verse 11. Because it goes into the account of that letter that our enemies had wrote to the king around this time. And that actually had put a stoppage to the building of the temple. Okay, because you had um, King Cyrus who had died, all right, and his son Cambyses II, all right, Cambyses II was his son. And he, he was um, ruling after his stead. And you had these heathen come to Cambyses as pertaining to us rededicating the temple. Okay, so this is Ezra chapter 4 verse 12. Verse 11, it says, this is the copy of the letter that they sent unto him, even to Artaxerxes the king. And this particular Artaxerxes right here is Cambus II. It says, thy servant on the side of the river, and at such a time, be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from to us are come to Jerusalem, building the rebellious and bad city. All right, so you see the, the terminology that they're using toward us. They're calling us rebellious bad, and so forth, all right? They're giving all these ill names toward the ruler of this time to hinder us from building the temple, all right? And you look at it today, all right? You have a lot of our enemies right now, all right? They'll love saying, oh, the black Hebrew Israelites, these guys right here, all right? Putting a very negative light under this thing of ours, man, when at the end of the day, all we're doing is returning back to our Lord, okay? The only thing is, it ain't it ain't the same, um, how can I put this? It ain't the same energy in the same fashion that you see within Christianity because that's full of a bunch of dogma, all right? But we coming straight out of the scriptures on what the Bible says, man. And part of what the scriptures say is that we're going to subdue our enemies, all right? You read about it in Isaiah, the 44th chapter, where it says in that day that we're going to rise up and subscribe ourselves to the name of Jacob and calling ourselves the name of Israel, all right? And as we're realizing who we are as a nation of people, you have these heathen that are out there that are trying to stop this movement from taking place, all right? Just like it had taken place actually in the flesh back then around the time of the building of the second temple. All right. So it says when you keep reading, it says, where do I leave off at? There we go. Verse 12. 
be it known unto the king that the Jews, which came up from thee to us, are come unto Jerusalem, building the rebellious and the bad city. Because not only the temple was being rededicated, but it was also the whole city of Jerusalem that was um, being rebuilt as well. Because you remember, almost 70 years prior to this, you had Nebuchadnezzar with his forces coming to Jerusalem, all right? And he had had um, the nation of Edom, all right, which was the daughter of Babylon, come in and destroy us, destroy the city with fire. And what else did they do? They destroyed the first temple, all right? So Jerusalem was destroyed, all right? Jerusalem was destitute, all right? And though that remnant that it came from Babylon, which was led by, um, which was led by Zerubbabel, all right, were giving leeway to come back and rebuild the desolate places thereof, okay? And it says, be it known now unto the king that if this city be built, that the wall set up against them, will they not pay, um, take patrol, tribute, and custom, and so thou shalt and damage the revenue of the kings. And now because we have made maintenance from the king's palace, and it was not meet for us to see that the king's dishonor, thereof have we sent and certified the king, that the search may be made in the book of the records of thy fathers, so shalt thou find in the book of the records and know that this city is a rebellious city and hurtful unto the kings and providences that they have moved sedition within the same of old time for which cause was the city destroyed. Okay, so when you go into this account, they pretty much wrote this letter, all right, to King Cambus II or Artaxerxes around this time. And within this letter that they had wrote to um, the king of Persia, all right, they pretty much had him remember in the book of records because you remember these other nations have books of records just as we have our book of records, the Chronicles, all right? But he had told him to look in these documents and remember how when we were in our power, when the Lord was dealing with us, when we actually had the temple that was set up within righteousness under Solomon, under David, all right, and a few of the other righteous kings that had ruled um, after them throughout a dispensation of time, the nations were in subject unto us, man, all right? So... When those heathen, when those heathen tried to build a temple with us and we disallowed it, they went right back to the king and wrote a letter pretty much saying, this is why they can't rebuild the temple. Because if they rebuilt the temple and they rebuilt the city, what's going to take place? They're not going to pay tribute. They're not going to be subjugate, some a subject under you and they're going to try to do their own thing. All right. And within that being the case, Canvas II put a hold on building the temple. All right. Because of the words that those heathen had made. All right. Now, I wanted to start off on Exodus. I'm sorry, Ezra, the fourth chapter, just going within that. All right. Because, again, as you see the title of this lesson, it says a remnant shall return and build. All right. And that had taken place back then around the second temple. And when you look at it spiritually, that's taking place right now. All right. Now, the next scripture that I'm going to go into is going to be in the book of um, Haggai, the first chapter. And I'm going to read the book of Haggai, the first chapter. All right, because you had the prophets Haggai and Zechariah that was alive and well active in the, um, within their um, burden, within their prophecy around the time of um, the governor Zerubbabel and Joshua, the high priest, the son of um, Josedek. OK, and hopefully this is making sense. This lesson is more so going to be a, a history lesson, but at the same time, it's going to be a history lesson. But looking at history and seeing how it equates today within a spiritual matter. OK. So this is the book of um, Haggai, and I'm going to read the whole first chapter, all right? And the thing about it is Haggai is not a long book, all right? The first chapter is not a long chapter, all right? But with everything that I just explained before I read this, put it into mind of what was taking place around the time of Zerubbabel and Joshua the high priest, all right? There was building that was being done, but, excuse me, the building had taken a lot of time. Okay, and a lot of Jake got um, they got lax, all right, and they got um, discouraged because of all the hindrances that was taking place back then. Okay, this is the book of Haggai, the first chapter, and I'm gonna start from the top. And it reads, in the second year, in the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, This people say the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house shall be built. All right. Now, 
you look at it spiritually today. All right, you have what's written of, matter of fact, let's see here, I'm gonna pull it up because um, the brother Tazama and myself did a lesson as pertaining to this um, a few weeks ago. All right, it was going on the aspect of um, Jake being very comfortable as pertaining to building the temple. All right, you got a lot of Israelites that are out there that don't wanna get their hands dirty involved in um, building. All right, when this is, um, when you build this, all right, this is a sign of our salvation coming soon, man. All right, every time we had built a temple, all right, that was a sign when the Lord was getting close to us again. All right, when the tabernacle was erected in the wilderness, you had the cloud that was over us around that time. All right, when King David, all right, was um, given the blueprint, all right, really he was given a blueprint by when he was Moses, if you can receive it, all right, but King David was given a blueprint, all right, and he had Solomon build the temple. And right after the temple was um, erected, what had taken place? They had burned incense and the spirit of the Lord dwelt within the temple. All right. It said a cloud descended down and spread all among the inner temple, the inner gates. All right. And Jake offered up an abundance of sacrifices. All right. Even after the second temple was finally er um, it was er eradicated, after the second temple was built up, you had Jake offering up an abundance of sacrifices. All right. They were singing a song. They had the Levites, the choir singing and so forth, which on a spiritual sense, what we're doing right now. All right, and we even look at the final temple that's being built, the third temple, which is built by men, which consists of men. All right, the Lord is getting closer to this place and he's getting ready to deliver us out of this place, man. All right, hey, shout out warm to you all on the comment board as well. Okay, now uh, let me see here. I was trying to find the scripture here. I believe it's in 1 Peter. It's been so long since I read this. Maybe 10, let's see. One sec, y'all, one sec. Yeah, so I just read in Haggai, the first chapter and the second verse, it says, thus speaketh the Lord of the host, saying, the people say the time has not come and the time that the Lord's house should be built. All right, now I'm gonna pull this precept out right here in Peter because as I'm reading this in Haggai, I'm gonna go into the history of what was taking place, but also go into a spiritual look of how that applies to the day. In our ministry today and it's building the temple today now Haggai had explained that you had people that had said the Lord's house is going to be built so they want to continue on and they BS doing what they was doing all right you had a lot of Jake's that was discouraged a lot of Jake's that was coming against the men of the Lord and so forth that's pertaining to the building of the temple and you see that take place right now man spiritually this is second Peter chapter 3 verse 2 I'm sorry verse 3 it says knowing this first that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Now that's the mind state of a lot of you people today that are out here, all right? And a lot of you Jakes had that mind state as well. This is that as they had it back then, because you got people that are come up to the camps that'll say, oh, I believe in the Lord. Oh, I believe I'm an Israelite. But when it comes to doing the work, they make X, Y, Z amount of excuses on why they don't want to get their hands involved as pertaining to building, all right? Or they'll be quick to say, well, there was earthquakes that happened hundreds of years ago. So how do you know that we're in those days, all right? Jake has that lackadaisical mind state and they really don't believe that the Lord is getting ready to come. They really don't believe that the temple of the Lord is being built right now with men, all right? Now, when you go back to Haggai, now this is pertaining to the second temple that was built. All right, but when you look at it on a spiritual eye, this still applies to us today spiritually as pertaining to the third temple, if you can receive it. All right, so as I read earlier in the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter, you had people that were talking about the coming of the day of the Lord, how it's not nigh. You had people around the time of Haggai the prophet saying, then came the word of the Lord of Haggai the prophet saying, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lies waste? All right, because you had Jake, that was very comfortable, all right? When you look in the history, all right, when you had Zerubbabel and the rest of those Israelites that had left out of Babylon to build, you still had an abundance, uh, an abundance like hella Israelites that didn't want to leave Babylon because they had substance, they had particular things that they didn't want to leave. And I didn't want to use the word substance because again, a lot of Jake was in the state of poverty, all right? Now you still had certain Israelites that did become assimilated in the Babylonian culture, all right, and they gained particular wealth or so forth, but you had Jake that just had their lives in Babylon and they didn't want to leave, 
And then you had particular jakes that did leave out of Babylon with Zerubbabel. And throughout an 18-year period of time, all right, it took 18 years for us to really get into building the temple. Because as soon as Zerubbabel and the rest of those Israelites came out of Babylon and Cyrus gave the decree to build, all right, right when they were, we were getting those stones settled and the foundation settled, which actually took a lot of time, all right, you had Cyrus' son who had reigned afterwards, and like we read earlier in um, Ezra the fourth chapter, all right, he had put a stop to his building. All right, so as that had taken place, like I stated earlier, a lot of Jakes got this, um, they got um, discomforted, all right, they got lax, they got, um, they pretty much didn't believe, they faith shook, all right, they didn't believe the temple was going to ever be built, all right, because of all the things that was taking place. There was an extreme state of um, discouragement, all right? And it says, now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag with holes. All right, so when you look at this, all Haggai's doing is alluding to the curses as pertaining to Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, on if we rebel against the Lord, this is going to happen to us, man. All right. Now, what Jake didn't understand back then was them getting lax as pertaining to building the temple was a form of rebelling against the Lord. All right. Because if they would have understood the scrolls that was written of in Isaiah, the 45th chapter, Isaiah spoke of Cyrus that was going to come and allow us to rebuild. All right. But you had a lot of people coming up against us and it was a lot of Shit, excuse my French, but it was a lot of shit that was going on around that time, man. So Jake's mind got all type of messed up, distracted, and so forth, man. All right? And when you even go into the history as pertaining to that temple, like I had stated before, Jake was in a very extreme state of poverty, man. That's why Haggai mentioned that as well. All right? Jake was poor, okay? Just like you see our people today, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans today in a state of poverty. All right? Jake literally built that temple, I don't want to say off scratches because, yeah, you know, there were certain things that was brought over from Babylon, but it wasn't the same as before. That's why, again, when the temple was finally built, Jake was in a state of mourning and they had wept because it didn't have nearly the same amount of glory that the first temple had had. All right. But it says in verse seven, thus saith the Yahweh of hosts, consider your ways, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. And I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why saith the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man into his own house? All right, so the beginning of that verse says, ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. All right, because again, Jake really expected the glory of that first temple. All right, but when they see... It came in a fashion that they didn't expect. You had the heathen that tried to hinder us from building the temple. All right. We were supposed to have different heathen. All right. Give us different logs and timber and um, sail it over to the coast of Joppa so we could build it. But you had those um, th those um, Phoenicians that didn't want to um, apply in that because they was mad because they couldn't get involved in helping us build and so forth. There was a lot of things that was taking place and it caused Jake to be in a discouraged state of mind. All right. And that stopped them from building. Even after we had had the green light from King Darius to continue to build, Jake got lax afterwards, man. All right. And it says, therefore, the heathen over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from the fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labors of the land. All right, so on top of us not having the sufficient things that we needed in order to build the temple, on top of the heathen that was coming up against us, hindering us from building the temple, you also had droughts and all that that was taking place too. So Jake was looking at it like, dang, this is a state of hopelessness right now. Jake was looking at it like they were through. But at the end of the day, it was just a test. All right, it was just a test. Okay, now when he continued to read, it says, Then Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant, this is the key point. All right. It says, In Josiah, I'm sorry, in Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, with all the remnant of the people, obeyed 
the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God has sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. All right. So after Haggai had spoke these words that we're reading about. All right. It says what? Um, Zerubbabel, Joshua, and the remnant of the people of Israel that came back and they served the Lord and they finished up dedicating the temple. All right. Now you look at that spiritually today. All right. You look at that spiritually today, man. All right, you have the remnant that's returning right now, building the temple, okay? You had uh, Zerubbabel, which means sown in Babylon, okay, who was the governor. He came out of Babylon, same thing with Joshua, the high priest. And that remnant that you, we, we just read about right there came from Babylon as well. Now, something to think about, and when I read that, it sparked my attention, all right, because it said there was a remnant, all right, a small remnant that it came to Jerusalem and helped build the temple and build the city, which went to show you that there was still a plethora of Israelites that were in the land of Babylon that didn't want to leave. Okay? Now, you look at it in a spiritual standpoint today. All right? You have the remnant that's returning unto the Lord spiritually, building the temple spiritually, while all the rest of Jake don't want to get out of Babylon. They stuck in their sealed houses. They don't want to leave this place. Their minds are full of this place, man. All right. When this place is going to lie waste at the end of the day, America is going to lie waste, which is mystery Babylon, man. All right. Matter of fact, I got a precept I'm going to pull up in the book of Micah, the second chapter. Hold on one sec. This is Micah, chapter two, verse 10. It says, arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest, because it is polluted. It shall destroy you even with the sword of destruction. All right. So who is this applying to? All right. This is applying to Israel, but mainly the remnant. All right. Because that remnant are going to arise and depart. Just that spiritually back then around this time of um, Zerubbabel and Joshua, you had that remnant that had fled out of Babylon. And what did they do? They rebuilt the city of Jerusalem. They rebuilt the temple. Even though there was a lot of stuff going on, there was a lot of distractions, things that was taking place. All right, they still had to rebuild. All right, still had to rebuild. You even had heathen that it came up against them and tried to come up and stop them from building the temple. And they still had to continue on and do it. Now, again, it stretched out the time, but it still got done. All right, and you look at it today. All right, we're building spiritually. All right, we arose and departed out of Babylon within the mind state because we were sown in this place at a point in time, man. All right, however long you was in the truth. Okay, I'm sorry, however long you was in the world, excuse me, before you was in the truth, all right, you have all of that that you had sown into Babylon, man, all right? So just as that remnant that had left out with Zerubbabel and that had left out with Joshua to build, we're doing that today, man, all right? We're rebuilding those desolate places today through the Spirit. I'm going to keep reading. It says, Then spake Haggai, Yahweh's messenger, in Yahweh's message unto the people, saying, I am with you, saith the Lord. And Yahweh stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, in the four and twentieth day of the sixth month in the second year of Darius the king. All right. So you had the spirit of the Lord had stirred up the minds of these men to come back and build, man, just as we're doing it today. All right. The remnant is returned out of Babylon in this building, man. That's why earlier it said arise and depart, for this is not your rest. We are arising and getting up out of here, man. All right. Now, remember as well, when you go into it, our, our history is so vast. All right. When you look at really why those heathen didn't want to, they didn't want us to build because they knew that we were going to be in power afterward, man. That's why the heathen had always poked at us and do certain things to stop us from building, man. All right. Matter of fact, I got another precept here because pretty much what they did was they had wrote that letter to the king in Ezra, the fourth chapter. And they pretty much went into the book of the records and tried to point out reasons of why we're not supposed to be building the temple. They tried to pretty much point fingers at us, accusing us, man. All right. And you have Esau Edom that's doing it today. OK. And you read about it in Revelation, the 12th chapter. It talks about how salvation is came after the accuser of our brethren is brought down. All right. So just as those heathen and wrote those letters to, to the king. All right. And tried to point at reasons why we they, they didn't want us to build the temple. 
All right, they had did it back then. Matter of fact, I'm going to bring that out in Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. One second. This is Jeremiah chapter 50, and I'm going to start at verse 6. And it reads, my people that have been lost sheep, their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All right, now one, there was a plethora of different times where you had Jake worshiping different idols. All right, and that had caused Jake to fall off. That's why the Lord destroyed Jerusalem in the first place. Because of the different things that Jake was doing, man. And then on top of that, all right, you had, again, being involved in those different ideologies, in those, in those philosophies. Jake had taken on to those customs and left serving the Lord and served idols, man. All right, so Jake got scattered all over the place. And that actually led to us being scattered physically. All right, even around the time of the Persians, all right, what did you have? You had Jake's that was intermingling with heathen women, all right, and they were teaching their children to speak the heathen's language, and they started worshiping the um, worshiping the way that those heathen did. All right, so around that time, all right of, of Ezra, which it was a little after um, Joshua and Zerubbabel, they were commanded to throw those heathen women from Jerusalem and our ways, and even our children. And those children that got thrown out were actually Israelites, okay, because their mothers was heathen, but their fathers was Israelites. All right, so you had Jake's that was scattered all over the place at around around that time, man. All right, and you even see it forth today, that falling away that had to take place. We had to be scattered unto the uttermost parts of the earth, as the scripture say in Deuteronomy, the, third cha the 30th chapter. All right, but just as we were scattered, all right, we're returning in the process in our minds. All right, after we heard the voice of the Lord in the form of the prophets, starting with our apostles and our elders, we had returned back to the Lord. All right, just as... Just as the remnant had heard the word of Haggai the prophet. All right. Now, this is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 7. And this is the key point. And it says, All that found them had devoured them. And their adversaries said, We offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. All right. So, just as you had those heathen come to um, the king of, um, of uh, Persia around that time and try to accuse us on the different things that we had did pertaining to the book of the law, you had the heathen do it even when they destroyed Jerusalem, man. When you read that in Jer Jeremiah, the 50th chapter, that's as pertaining to those heathen giving reasons of why they destroyed us. Why they pretty much um, had wrote that and pretty much within that, that it gave them justification within their own minds to destroy us. All right, I got another precept real quick in the book of Psalms 137. Bear with me one second, Baba Kishore. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 137, and I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. And when you go on to raise it, that pretty much means destroy it. They destroyed everything, the temple, the city, all right, and so forth, man. That was the children of Eden that did that, all right? And spiritually, well, not even spiritually, physically, you have them today, which represent the, the, the daughter of Babylon, man, here in America, all right? And just as they had destroyed us physically back then, they're, just, they're trying to destroy Jake spiritually today, man, all right? That's why when you look out the window and you see your own people, they bug out of their minds, they come up against you, they've been indoctrinated by Esau Edom's philosophies, man, they threw. They done. So they're still trying to continue on with destroying. All right. And then you see what they're doing right now as pertaining to YouTube and so forth, man. All right. They're trying to cut brothers' pages off and so forth, man. They continue to want to destroy it. But the thing about it is this is of the most high, which means that it is going to flourish. All right. There was always a remnant of Israel that was prophesied to return and build. And that's taking place right now. Just as it physically had taken place around the time of Zerubbabel and Joshua, all right, and they actually physically came back and they had built, it's taking place spiritually right now within the spirit, man. All right, you got that remnant that's returning as what was prophesied to happen. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull up the book of Amos. Hey, Lord willing, this lesson is making sense so far. Again, I really didn't know exactly um, the angle I was going to tackle it. 
you know, but just right now, just I'm flowing through the spirit, you know. But let's see here. This is the book of Amos, chapter 9, verse, uh, verse 11. It says, in that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. All right. Now, when you look at the way the second temple was built, that had taken place. Jerusalem was destroyed. All right. And Israelites were sent back. There was a remnant that was sent out of Babylon to build it. All right. But the thing about this here, when we read it in Amos, the ninth chapter, that's talking about now, man. All right. In the spiritual form. OK. And those desolate places are being re-erected, man. And again, it's in the spiritual form because you have kings that are rising up right now, which is you brothers that are out there that are preaching. OK, let's keep reading. It says that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the heathen which are called by my name, saith the Lord that doeth this. And that didn't happen yet, which goes to show you that this is supposed to is taking place now. All right. And then when our Lord comes back, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, he's going to bestow his men power, that remnant power. And what are we going to do? We're going to bind those heathen kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. All right. And we're going to have them build. OK, but on a spiritual note, we're building the temple up right now, man. And afterward, it's going to follow the different heathen. All right. The different heathen being subject unto us. OK, let's keep reading. It says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes, and that sowed seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and drink wine thereof, and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit thereof. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them. Save the Lord thy power. All right. Now, how do we know that's not talking about the second temple? Because even afterwards, we were pulled out of that land again. All right. So this is talking about spiritually what we're doing today, which is ultimately going to lead us to our salvation and us being delivered out of this place and brought into Jerusalem with the mighty hand by Yahweh Shai, man, where we're going to dwell forever through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, man. All right. But the remnant the remnant has to return first, and the remnant is returning first right now to build. And that's taking place on a spiritual matter. All right? I'm going to end this off in Acts, the 15th chapter. One sec, I'm going to show. This is the book of Acts, chapter 15. And I'm going to start at verse, uh, whew, man, it's a lot into it. I'm going to just go straight to the point, all right? Because as James, James is speaking right here, and he's speaking um, pretty much there was a council that had taken place, all right? Because you had Paul and Barnabas that was preaching to the Gentiles or to those Israelite foreigners, all right? And you, you had certain sects of the Jews that was complaining that they were teaching men as pertaining to the scriptures, but they weren't teaching them to be circumcised. All right, so Paul and Barnabas had went back to Jerusalem and had a council with the other apostles and the other elders as pertaining to that matter of circumcision. Okay? Now, when you jump down, it says in Acts 15 and 15, let me start at verse... Let's start at verse 12. It says, Then all the multitudes kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders the Most High wrought among the Gentiles by them. And it says, And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how the Most High at first did visit the Gentiles to take out them of people for his name. All right, now the thing about these Gentiles, they were, these were Israelite foreigners, man. And it's spiritual. He's talking about Simon. What Simon is actually Peter. But the spirit was on Simon to teach to those Israelite foreigners when you read about it in Acts 10 chapter, which was Cornelius and that band of men. All right. It was on the spirit of Peter to teach those men. All right. Which, again, were Israelites. But it was very interesting when you look back and if you can receive it. All right. If you can receive it, Zerubbabel is Peter. All right. That's David through the spirit because we go by reincarnation and we believe in that. All right. But when you look at the history. All right. As a matter of fact. I actually meant to pull this out here in the Josephus. 
All right, I'm going to read this here in Josephus, and then I'm going to jump back to that. Because around that time when the second temple was being built and we were taken out of Babylon, you had a lot of Israelites that could not state their registry. All right. You had a lot of Israelites that didn't that couldn't prove that they were Israelites, but they believed. All right. And then you had Israelites that knew that their mother was he were heathen. All right. And they had, there was a point of time where they were actually in that way, but they knew that they were Israelites. I'm going to read this here in Josephus. And this is pertaining to uh, the building of the second temple. All right. This is Josephus, Antiquity of the Jews, and it's on page 348. And this is um, the 10th part in chapter 3. It says, And thus did these men go, a certain and determined number out of every family, though I do not think it proper to recite the particularly the names of those families that I may not take off the minds of my readers from the connection of the historical facts and make it hard for them to follow the coherence of my narration. But the sum of those that went up above the age of 12 years of the tribe of Benjamin, I'm sorry, the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, were 462 myriads and 8,000. The Levites were 74. The number of the women and children mixed together was 40,742. And beside these, there were singers and Levites 128, and porters 110. And of the sacred ministers, 392. There were also others beside these who said they were Israelites, but were not able to show their genealogies, 662. Some, there were also who were expelled out of the number of the honor of the priests. So you had Israelites that were expelled out of the nation. All right. They were Gentiles. And it says... Let me see here. They were about 525. The multitude also of servants who followed those and went up to Jerusalem, 7,337. All right. Now, the reason why I wanted to go into that, because this is this was that was pertaining to the building of the second temple. But when Zerubbabel had came to Jerusalem, OK, with the remnant of those Israelites, it was only a small number of them that had followed them out of there. And part of them didn't even know, they couldn't prove that they were Israelites, man. But they believed that they were Israelites. All right, so you look at it spiritually today, as we're building the temple today, and you have the scriptures going into the Gentiles that we just read in Acts the 15th chapter. These are Israelites, man. The way to understand the mystery of the Gentiles receiving salvation, you have to understand history, man. You have to understand history and how the Israelites became Gentiles. Remember, if we didn't follow the law, statutes, commandments, certain laws, certain high holidays we didn't keep. We were thrown out of the congregation by the priests, all right? And that had taken place, that had actually taken effect to an abundance of Israelites, man. So you had Israelites back then around the time of the second temple that couldn't prove their registry, and we can't prove our registry today. We just believe our faith, man. You got a lot of scoffers that are out there that try to say, ooh, they say they're from the tribe of Levi. They say they're from the tribe of Benjamin. How can you prove it? The scriptures say don't go into endless genealogies. When that's not what we're doing. We believe we're of these tribes due to faith, man. All right, an endless genealogy goes back to you tracing your lineage of your father, your father, your father, your father's father back then. But we don't have the book of records no more to be able to do that. So we just go strictly off faith, man. All right. Now I'm going to keep reading this in Acts the 15th chapter where I left off on. Okay. And again, I'm going to read verse 12, Acts 15 and 12. It says, then all the multitudes kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders the Most High wrought among the Gentiles by them. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon, who was Peter, if you can receive it as Zerubbabel as well. Simon had declared how the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out them a people for his name. And to this agreed the words of the prophet as it is written. So you find it very spiritual that Peter was sent to these Gentiles, these Israelite foreigners, to bring them back into the fold. All right. And Zerubbabel was set up to take the remnant of those Israelites that were from Babylon. And a lot of them didn't even know they couldn't prove they were Israelites, I should say, and brought them back to the fold as pertaining to building. Because when you read this right now, when you read the book of Acts, really starting with Yahawashai, but that was the start of that temple being rebuilt, man, the third temple. And now we're on the final stages of it being built here within these very last few seconds of these last days. The temple's getting ready to be complete. 
So don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable because Satan will try to get in your mind and get comfortable to try to stop you from building. It'll have certain thoughts in your head like it's not it, it's not coming by fast enough. Hey, man, the Lord is moving. The Lord is working. The temple's already dang near built up, man. We had the last few, few uh, nails as pertaining to the last few stones. All right? But as we read earlier in Amos 9 and 11, it's being reiterated right now. It says, and after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon Peter, all right, or David, or Zerubbabel, hath declared how the Most High at the first did visit the Gentiles to take them out of the people for his name. And two, this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set up. And the next verse says that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and the Gentiles upon whom my name is called. When you go into that word residue there in the Greek, that means remnant. All right. So that remnant is returning to build, man. And those Gentiles that you read about right afterwards is pertaining to that residue or that remnant afterwards, man. All right. Just as it was built, the second temple was built. You had Zerubbabel, Joshua, and a residue of Jake's come and build. Part of that residue, they couldn't explain their genealogy. They couldn't show forth their genealogy at all, period. But they just believed off faith who they were, what tribes they were from. They believed, man. Nothing different than what we're doing right now. And we're fulfilling prophecy. A remnant is returning and building this temple, man. It says that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles Upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. All right. And James, who was speaking, was going back to what was just read earlier in Amos, the ninth chapter, as pertaining to the remnant that's returning, building up the desolate places, man. That's taking place right now. OK, so, hey, man, you know, Lord willing, this was edifying. All right. Um, I pretty much touched up on the main points I wanted to go into. But um, spiritually, I wanted to go into the building of the second temple around the time of the Persian Empire. And you see certain things that had taken place, certain hindrances that had happened, certain afflictions that we had to go through as pertaining to the building of the second temple. And you look at how that temple was built, what was taking place, and you look at it spiritually to what's taking place as this third temple is being built spiritually, man. A very close similarity to it. All right. But I'm going to end it off on that. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Hopefully, it didn't sound like I was all over the place. But I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and blessings and much salutation to you, elect Akiam, across the four winds of this earth, kicking this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom. I'm just going to read a few of these comments on here. Let's see what scriptures y'all might have posted. Shalom to you on the comment boards, man. Beautiful precepts.